Good afternoon to everyone in Houston. I hope we've all recovered from the Super Bowl. This week we are continuing our series of On the Road with the PSA Dude, and today we've headed south to Galveston, and I am standing at the entrance to the Ocean Star Offshore dr Drilling Rig and Museum, located here off the shore of Galveston. Just a bit off the shore though, we've walked down a small pier and we prepare to enter this cool museum that's a rig and it's got a bunch of exhibits in it about drilling for oil, which is pretty much what Houston is all about. So all you Houstonians, get ready, come inside to experience a cool new museum like none you've ever seen. Come on in. I like the swordfish. I'm standing with Lisa White, who's the operations director here at the Ocean Star. Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> She's going to explain to us today a lot about what goes on with offshore drilling. Well, the Ocean Star is a facility. We've been open for about six years, which is fairly young for a museum, but this was a neat idea, especially regionally with the petrochemical industry in Houston being so large. The Offshore Energy Center was a group of people that decided that the public needs to know more about this. So they spent many years thinking about what to have and why. What we've wound up with is a facility that tries to touch on all of the aspects of the offshore industry, from the drill bits and the seismic ships looking for it to the pipelines that actually carry it off to shore. They put it on a refurbished jack-up rig as an example of one of these machines. So you get to actually walk on board a machine that used to be part of this industry. The Ocean Star was built in 1969 just down the road in Beaumont, Texas, and it drilled about 200 wells for about a 20-year time frame. The Offshore Energy Center got a hold of it in the mid-90s and spent about three years turning it into this facility, making it wheelchair accessible, toddler friendly. Um, so we did knock out walls, change things up a bit, but we kept the exterior decks and in particular the rig floor and the drilling area intact so that people can walk out and see what that actually looks like. Then inside the museum, we've tried to put together a chronological flow of information from the exploration and discovery through the completion and the production, and then into what we even do with these products, which is immense. A lot of people, you know, think that it is mainly fuel, when really all of the plastics, elastic, lycra, you know, all of these products that we use every single day are actually made from chemistry involving petroleum. How can we get to the museum? Are you open daily? Yes, we're open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m seven days a week, 363 days a year. We're closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we're located in the ship channel in Galveston, just off of Harborside Drive at 20th Street. This is the BOP accumulator which is a uh, short for blowout preventer accumulator, which is where they store this nitrogen gas. And I think this is used in case there's a, a shock wave or something that wants to push the, the bit out of the ground, then they, they pump this down there to uh, keep it in place. I think that's what it's for, but then again, I'm not in the oil and gas business. So we'll go with that for now. As we bring you our next PSA from the Museum of Fine Arts. Remember, the Museum of Fine Arts has ongoing film series every weekend. This weekend, they are presenting Snow Falling on Cedars, and the film is part of a uh, series of films on mental health and the law. This series will present four films chosen for their interpretations of the legal consequences surrounding socio-political issue, socio issues and mental illness. Panel discussions will follow each screening. So this weekend, Snow Falling on the Cedars, directed by Scott Hicks, set in the post-World War II American Northwest, Snow Falling on Cedars explores racial intolerance and fairness in the courtroom with its tale of murder and lost love. 
Japanese-American Kazuo Miyamoto is accused of killing a white man off the coast of Washington. 1950s bigotry and mistrust have poisoned the island's race relations, and Miyamoto has few supporters. He looks for help from fair-minded journalist Ishmael Chambers, whose objectivity is blurred by the fact that the only woman he ever loved is now Miyamoto's wife. Very good film this weekend, Museum of Fine Arts. For more information about films at the museum and other exhibits at the museum, you can visit them online at the address on the screen. I'm standing now on the drill floor or rig floor, which is where the heart of operations goes on on the rig. Right here is where they change out the pipes, they rotate them out, they add the new extensions on, and this is all done with a combination of man and machine. And in fact, way, way up there is where is a seat, a platform called the monkey board, and a man stands up there and helps rotate out the pipes. It looks very scary to me. We're going to bring you our next PSA from Diverse Works with an exhibit that's ending this week on February 7th, and that is the David McGee Telesti Notebooks of the Black Sea exhibit. A solo exhibition by groundbreaking Houston-based painter David McGee was open from December 4th and will end February 7th. Telesti represents a radical departure for the artist, as well as a deepened exploration of his personal iconography by incorporating special performances and readings orchestrated by McGee himself. Inspired by Conrad Aiken's poem of the same name, Telesti explores the notion of the personal journey and the weight of the choices one makes along the way. This exhibit, remember, this weekend closes February 7th. It's your last chance to get down to Diverse Works and see it. For more information on all the events and exhibits going on at Diverse Works, you can reach them online at the address on your screen. This really awesome looking thing is an escape capsule. It's in some ways the lifeline of the offshore rig. If there's any kind of disaster on the rig, up to 28 men can fit inside this thing. It's got a two-way radio, emergency supplies, and it has a motor that will take it safely away from the rig so that if there's any kind of collapse or explosion, at least 28 men are safe. Really cool. Our next PSA comes from the CAM, the Contemporary Arts Museum of Houston. Right now they're presenting the first major museum ex exhibition for Matthew Ritchie. Matthew Ritchie, Proposition Player. The exhibition will be the first major museum exhibition for the multimedia artist's work. Featuring works made in 2002 and 2003, the exhibition includes major installations cr created specifically for the soaring interiors of the Contemporary Arts Museum in Houston. Matthew Ritchie's complex and imaginary story of the history of the universe is told through his monumental yet intricate work, which includes paintings, drawings, sculpture, and digital animation. Matthew Ritchie's exhibit will remain on view at the CAM until mid-March. But you can get out this week and see it at the Contemporary Arts Museum. There's another great um, ex uh, exhibition downstairs at the CAM. For more information on this event and others, you can visit the Contemporary Arts Museum online at the address on the screen. Using a sophisticated system of valves and pumps, the barge is tilted by...
Now here we have the Bullwinkle, which is over 1,600 feet tall and actually stands on the ocean floor. But this machine over here doesn't stand on the ocean floor at all. It works like a buoy and it's, and it's held in place by these giant chains that stretch out around it. In fact, the radius of where these chains touch the ground would cover the Beltway or the city of San Francisco. This, can, this machine can be in five to 6,000 feet of water. And the chains themselves, well, each link of chain is this size and weighs over 500 pounds. We have another great PSA coming to you from the Houston Grand Opera. This one goes out to all you kids out there. It's a reminder from HGO that they're holding chorus auditions for Turando. They need boys and girls ages 7 to 14. Auditionees should be prepared to sing a song of his or her choice in a non-belt voice. The opera will provide an accompanist, but singers should bring along a copy of their music. HGO will present seven performances of Turando with rehearsals beginning in early March and performances running through mid-May. The auditions are this Saturday, February 7th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Wortham Theater Center at 510 Preston on the sixth floor. For more information and to schedule an audition, you can contact Jitim Chakamoy, I hope I pronounced that correctly, HGO scheduler at 713-546-0224. These are the underground Christmas decorations for the oil rigs. Actually, they're the, um, the subsea wellheads. So there's a bunch of little oil wellheads all throughout this. This is the ship that's actually sucking the oil out. The, the rigs just drilled the lines, the pipelines, and these are uh, sucking out the oil. We're going to bring you our next PSA from the Alley Theater, which until February 15th is still running Top Dog, Underdog. The Alley Theater will produce the Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize winning Top Dog Underdog as the first production of 2004 on its intimate Newhouse stage. A co-production with Steppenwolf Theater Company, Top Dog Underdog is directed by Steppenwolf Ensemble member Amy Morton and features Alley Theater resident company actors David Rainey as Lincoln and K. Todd Freeman as Booth. Lincoln and Booth are brothers, ironically named by their father. Lincoln sits in an arcade all day, dressed as his presidential namesake and suffering through countless mock assassinations. His brother Booth huddles in their run-down apartment, practicing cards in hopes of becoming a great three-card Monty hustler like his brother Lincoln was in his youth. This highly acclaimed drama is a jagged, poetic look at the end game between two black brothers in America. It's a really great play. Get out and see it in this next week or two at the Alley. For more information on this play and other events at the Alley, you can visit them online at www.alleytheater.org.